the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So, we've, we've taught several messages, different dimensions, different approaches, but just a little refresher so that I'll connect with what I want to discuss today. We have learned, and for those of us who are just learning, um, there are two dimensions. You may want to write it down again. There are two dimensions to kingdom advancement. Every time we talk about the advancement of God's kingdom, it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject. If you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement, then it means you do not love God and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom. Kingdom advancement, generally speaking, refers to, before I give you the dimensions, um, it refers to any, listen, and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily god's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway 
to establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Then the second dimension, taking the influence of the kingdom, his culture, his ideology, permeating society. When we are able to successfully do these two things, then it can be said that the kingdom of God is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation. My concern this evening, this night, is um, the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men. I want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this. By God's grace, I think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of Jesus Christ across territories. We've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom. But I think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. So I want us to look at a few things that I believe will be very, very important. Daniel chapter 12, please, verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Media, we have a lot of scriptures today, so please you'll be ready for that. Um, this will be more of a study tonight. I just want us to we'll pray later on, but um, I really want us to have understanding. I'd like us to read together. It's projected as loud as you can. One, to read. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh-huh. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars. So there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness. It says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many, not few. In God's mind he desires that every believer would participate. Listen. In this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is concerned. Largely we have left this ministry to evangelists. We have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold. They are the only ones who make the altar calls. They are the ones who print tracts. They are the ones who do all of these things. And then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities, they largely do not do it with understanding. They just do it um, in honor of a, 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 a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual. You see, the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding, you will not be blessed from it. Understanding is very important. Understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity. Is is religion? You see, religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh. And all through Scripture, you see that people who did even nice things religiously, they did not receive any reward. The system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in. And then on the strength of that understanding, you will now get up and act. Acting just because others are doing it. Acting just because you are told to do it. Acting just because you want to, you know, ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results. That's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue, the drive to continue. Because we largely carry out activities, especially in the body of Christ. There's too much copying. Many people do not sit down to find out why. Why this? Why this? Why do I have to pray in tongues? Well, I just saw apostle praying in tongues and I think he's good for me. That's nice. But a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding. Are we together? Why do I have to tithe? I think everybody who I know to be rich is tithing, so I should just do it. That's not enough. Conviction is very important in the kingdom. You must have a, a sense of personal persuasion. It produces restful confidence. So no matter how sacrificial the activities are, your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it. Lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do 
because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of God we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the Lord will help us tonight in Jesus name I I have been burdened especially in recent times um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning are we together the establishment of the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of God all through scripture you see from the Old Testament to the New Testament the Lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turned back to him and i think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement this is a major part of kingdom advancement in fact sincerely speaking listen in order of priority kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men first before the systems so if we have industrialization we have civilization as a use of as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell we have people who are not serious with god you know that that is that is um that is not balanced is that true god desires first and foremost more than civilization more than prosperity more than education more than you know people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom god wants the hearts of men the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again and the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too. But many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others. So we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others. And most times we tell ourselves, I'm not a man of God. Are we together? I'm not a man of God. 
So during a corporate evangelism like we have it, we can walk around and talk to people. But as a personal revelation, that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer, as you'll be learning shortly, it is a responsibility. Listen, soul winning, establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer. It's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not. It's, it's, it's like breathing. It is part of the component of your spiritual existence. And if we are not taught and pushed into that point, then there will be no continuity. A time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things. Do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents they loved God they loved Jesus Christ they kept the values of the kingdom but they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the Lordship of Christ to the heart of the children so you can find a man and a wife uh, you know his wife who loved God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son has my daughter has my friend has my roommate can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious Christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about God the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to Jesus Christ no we leave them to other people are we together now do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them. How many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship. Look, talking about Jesus does not save men. Talking about him Talking about spiritual things, talking about rapture, talking about heaven, talking about grace, talking about whatever. It does not save men. Men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship. So there are so many people around the body of Christ, but they are not saved. And let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of God so much they know scriptures are we together they can talk they've done so many things that look spiritual and so they convince themselves that by those activities they are saved they are not saved at all do you know let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the Bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of Christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the Bible says you must believe. You can stand and you are joking. You are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told. And not be saved. And go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell. Soul winning. Soul winning is not just saving people's souls. 
so winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy i, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established All through scripture we see that the Lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah. there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives Before I continue, I want to ask you a very sincere question. Can you look at your life, you who was or were, and you who is now, can you note a noticeable, um, tangible transformation? If you cannot find a transformation in ideology, in beliefs, in passion, in priority, you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen. amen praise the lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before 
anyhow living after. And you say it doesn't matter. No, it, it matters. You are not born again. It's as simple as that. There must be some degree of priority. The passion. Look, let me tell you something. When a woman is pregnant, are we together? When a woman is pregnant, the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic. Mandatory and automatic. Except, except she has not taken in. If she has taken in, it will begin to alter her psychologically, physiologically. There will be noticeable alterations. That's how it must be. If the seed of the word of God has been planted in you, then there should be certain things. Your appetites, your desires, your values. And most importantly, your priority. Let me tell you, how you know you are really saved is that your priority about God and the things of God supersedes every other thing. Yeah. That's what our parents told us when they got born again. All of a sudden, there's this song that says, um, When all things that surround me become shadow in the light of you. That's what happens. A new life. A new life. And all of a sudden, you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions. And they look like shadows compared to what you have found. This is how Jesus teaches about salvation. That someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority. No. Not saying anything, not doing anything. I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be in intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that i find a soul that needs jesus and he says sir i want to be born again then you lead him to christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife Someone comes and says, hey, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner. You see how serious the person is? That's how serious you must also be with soul winning. See, this is not religion. There is a spirit, the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that. See, the gospel when truly received and the power therein will, you will be too grateful to keep quiet. Find out people in the Bible who receive things from Jesus. Even when Jesus said, don't tell anybody, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman at Gadara, the Bible says he went to the Decapolis and brought the people. Remember the, the, that woman who married um, six men? And Jesus being the seventh man in her life. The Bible says she left her. She went to fetch water. But she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life, there's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have 
should God at any point be second place in your life that's what must happen to you first you must experience it so that when you get someone born again you know what the person should become like when you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion you know the job has not finished you should draw them to a point where it eats them up it's called the zeal of the lord hallelujah so you can stay 10 years how many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care how many wives whose husbands are not saved how many children whose parents are not saved look at me over 90 percent if not everyone if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place call hell there is a real place today like this call hell are we together the bible says and books were open listen to me books were open and another book was open which was the book of life hear what the bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says the bible says it is appointed unto man to die once listen carefully it says afterwards the judgment it didn't say after that a celebration after it is appointed unto man you see in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me please listen carefully i have had the opportunity to be at several funerals i've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people i knew were once alive now dead at that point brothers and sisters please look at me whether you have a phd listen please whether you had a first class are we together no matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life i don't care what you have done i don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive So if I give somebody school fees, that's good. He's going to school. If you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus, and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away hmm. there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken 
you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don moen song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend 
extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, Apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry. But my concern, listen, my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life. Listen, as it is knowing that this person died in Christ. You can die in money. Where are you going? Mention it. You can die in education. Where are you going to? You can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you died in what? You can die in worry, it's still hell. You can die in stress, it's still hell. Please, hear what I am saying. You see people dying all the time and we keep watching them. There are people today, every time you think of, you know right now, based on the Bible, except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know. I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain. But as far as the revelation of the Bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us, we know that those who did not die in Christ are lost and gone. They left their houses behind. Listen to me. They left their certificates behind. I'm not saying those things are not important. But they are only important. Listen. They are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? If you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy or cry in grief? What of your roommate? What of you? Because there are people who will never take this thing seriously. You will always come for koinonia. You will always go to churches and do a lot of things. But are you saved? It's a very serious question. That you are working for God does not mean you are saved. That you have a Christian name, Joshua, Jesus our salvation. No, 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 no. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people, sadly speaking, we are just shopping for larger congregations. Now, of course, it should culminate into church growth. But the foundation, listen, is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness. Do you know I can get this brother saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, loving the Lord, and as I've gotten him saved, I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning. Look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again. And God granted her grace. 
I think her younger brother also got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, you will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly, like yesterday, the day her dad was saved. When her father was saved, she called me crying. We met around then in the campus chapel. And she said, look, her whole family had been saved. Do you know, when he was saved, his family members had to drive to his place. And they say, which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to Jesus? If his finances, we can sort it out. And the man got saved under living faith. So that, 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 that fire has come to stay. The joy of salvation. When we give testimonies and we say, praise the Lord. I built a house. Somebody just built a house and he dashed me. We stand up, we roll on the ground. But when we say, praise the Lord. Someone got saved. We just clap and hey, please go and sit down. Because of our priority. Our priority. I've seen a few people that have trusted God to be saved, get saved, and I've been surprised at the joy, the joy that filled my heart. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? Not needs to be saved. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? There are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation. And you're not doing anything about it. I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child who insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands Jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation Let's rush quickly. Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors this is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of god this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your right in christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if i buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car i return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but i i i give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when god gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege If you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation 
the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we're going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of god is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of god is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now what, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of god don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to god in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say kai this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you're a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of god that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal 
this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get deep behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together I once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they, they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, I'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while I was looking at him the Lord opened my eyes and I'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when I say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and I saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true God is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being mm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about just okay, get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you
you've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray lord i'm coming for koinonia i know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to cgc there are all kinds of things like their phone missing like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them so we pray we silence those spirits And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia in answer to that prayer. The Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray not to faint. let me tell you listen there are many of our loved ones i guarantee you from now to december if you will pray for them you'll be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you but one day god will take them to one meeting where one man of god is and before you know it the power of god will carry them in that meeting the next thing you just hear they'll tell you i've been filled with the holy spirit i'm two weeks old <laughs> praying in tongues everybody say i will pray say i will intercede warfare prayers warfare prayers are not discussions listen warfare prayers are not prayers of petition right we have a teaching like that hopefully next year on prayer a series on prayer there is a difference between supplication there's a difference between petition warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption the name of jesus the blood of jesus the word of god these are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in christ over people over territories when we talk of warfare and intercession that's not the, that's one of the reasons listen listen hold on that's one of the reasons why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not just for you to feel anointed it's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare intense warfare do you know let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here you are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Dam. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there are you getting what I'm saying the Bible I will show you where this is the Bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer the tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture so I'm praying for my family that's what is on my mind as I'm praying in tongues I know that this tongues is not for edification of my spirit this tongues is for warfare to that end yeah that's how to pray that's how to pray fire that produces results you lock yourself off your phone that's not the time to be pinging and praying you are not serious you pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer 
but I believe in personal prayer. There are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone. Hmm. There is a way you can be praying with somebody. At a point, the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid. You too, you will feel guilty and say, oh yeah, let's round up. Father, we give you all the glory. Has God finished with you? Listen, when you are praying, the Holy Spirit is not there as a tenant. He is the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you, if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh. And watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit that's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you unfortunately it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager i've had you the next thing the guy said can i take one week uh, break I just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the harbor is there he's baffing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the harbor will say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread, it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them, they say be careful though. you are talking to me, you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit. All this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble. Will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Shakatabalataka. Rakata Preskadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity. It's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Skapata kata likatosh. Enkre to kata lava kata. Seke teke 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 te. Reko to koto pa kata lava. Mata pras kata. Oh yes, I am victorious. Te poto shola ba 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 ba. Every unsaved person will tear down those walls. We command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord. We command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 
1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It would take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in, in network. There are, those, there, there are frequent programs. Th those, you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it and then you sleep again let me tell you when when you are like that you will be surprised what will happen to you you will get up and just in a few minutes you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes he's not saying that's not the time to say oh i think i'm missing him no ricardo kaba what is happening to him now we secure him marakoto sobada pray and then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it oh come on see i'm teaching you what i do if i'm not doing it you will know you wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up eh? before you as you are waking up the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there i know it looks like i'm sounding silly but this is how victories are commanded so you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically so you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. Any church, listen, there are three departments. Now every department is important, especially in Koinonia. But hear me, I'm speaking to pastors. There are three departments in any church and any ministry. If the devil wants to destroy that ministry, there are three departments. Number one, the ministerial team. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. One, the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd, the man of God or the ministerial team. Number two, the worship team. Listen carefully. They are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of God to find expression. And the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of God. Number three, the prayer department. By the time the prayer, and, and for the prayer department, it doesn't, he, there, there are very little things that kill prayer people. Big things don't destroy prayer people. Little things. Little things. I like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire hmm. ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something God has done to my spirit. It's like a rope. God connected my spirit to every department. All the departments in this ministry. It's like a rope. Huh? The same way there is, I mean it literally. There is a level. Of course, they rise and fall. They move up and down. But there is a level that no department must go under. The moment they go under, I pick it in the spirit immediately. I know something is wrong. Either I must come and find out what is wrong, or I must pray, or whatever it is. If the problem is from me, you know for sure a retreat. 
quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled mm. that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take out time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them one verse five okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall you also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in god which raised the dead look at what they went through verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us last verse 11 ye also helping together how that's why we were victorious ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of god there were times we were about facing death but ye also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 it says for i know i wish we could read from 14 it says for i know that this shall turn to my word how through your i know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ next scripture isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who pray jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of god to find expression hmm. let me give you two more scriptures romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture 
is a grand scripture first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first timothy 2 1 to 5 i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that god will save them the second way you participate in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at second timothy 4 verse 5 thank you jesus god is helping us matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach nine we're reading down that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thy heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved read on for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so it talks about salvation read what it says for the scripture saith 
whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and Simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word I will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners 
their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please pastor alpha come and give 10,000 pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practice in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that when you read Acts chapter 4 don't turn there just write it down Acts chapter 4 32 to 37 the Bible says how that the early church they had a culture the Bible says there were people who sold their lands there are people who sold certain things and brought the resources it said none lacked among them there was such flow of supplies there was such flow of benevolence because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship 
I said, over my dead body, not when I'm alive. At least it's within my power. How much is needed for this? Please, send me your account details. Let me see what I can do. And that man called me and was crying together with his wife. They were both crying and said, the Lord will bless you. See, kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman. Kingdom investment. Believe me when I tell you. When done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth. Forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately. My goodness. You will receive answers to prayers you did not pray. Kingdom investment. As a lifestyle, not something you do when some money just comes. How can I have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it? No way. And it's not because of koinonia. No. So you don't think it's just a bias just because I'm leading a ministry? Not at all. I consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier. There are many men of God who don't give. They don't even sow to the work they are doing. They don't. They demand for money from anybody. But they never give. Are we together? How can I sit down? I'm staying in a house of 20 million. And they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of God. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. See, I'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of God to vow certain vows. I learned this, I learned this attitude from David Ibiomi. He's a man who truly, truly is a, is a principality, territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances. His pastors are, the, are about the highest paid. They are more paid than bankers. They live in an estate. This is a church. But it came through giving. There are many of you. Let me talk to you. I want, I'm, I'm not saying this. I want to help you. There are many of you. When the offering basket is passing. It's truly. I say this not. Don't think I'm trying to manipulate you. I fear God. But let me tell you something. I will tell you why many of us. Never strike a chord and get the attention of God through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts I cannot give God it's not pride it's the truth I will be wicked how much do I spend on eating please talk to me how much do I spend on eating if I'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and I'm giving God offering of, of 20 kobo am I stupid won't I sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket? There are things you do that moves the heart of God. Make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life. Whether or not there is a giving program, find a need, create an opportunity and solve it. And watch the God of heaven arise for you. The third way we participate. There's a man, Dr. Paul Enche gave the story one time. I think he asked God to grant him grace. He wanted to set up, he owned different businesses, but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel. And God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions. Do you know 100 percentage me? 100 percent of the profit, 100 goes to the mission field. That's an unkillable man. I show you a man that no charm, no charm can touch. Let me show you a scripture now. We are going to pray. Very interesting scripture. Very, very interesting scripture. Matthew 27, please. Matthew 27. From verse 62. 
we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulcher sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse 4 for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb i'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the Lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you verse 8 now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him ten then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taking counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear 
oh they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in Hausa and we will pay for it Satan paid men to say Jesus is not alive he's paying Hollywood he's paying Hollywood he's paying the Illuminati he's paying musicians Satan is still paying men to say Jesus is not alive but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when I see great ministries that I know are serving the Lord in truth begging for money begging on TV if you can help us if you don't help us we will shut out do you know how bad I feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that they were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance God's business and watch him defend you God will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of God or a man of God and just go and drop it there I'm giving you a big secret you have silent I don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours 
the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision I don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when i looked at it it was no longer a tree i saw a big the only way i can you know a spirit that the bible calls leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now i saw it like that it was a huge the eyes one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head two red eyes angry the tail was and not it was like a snake connected to it the tail was another creature and had its own life by itself and the creature was looking at me i was looking at it it was looking at me and this is what he told me he says so you think you can release financial blessings for god's people something like that and that was it I know these spirits they know me i've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because god already knows that you have vowed that 20 percent of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no he's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there are you hearing what i'm saying yeah you make up your mind that you are going to start giving all of a sudden you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes listen i preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a but there was a time ben Hinn was looking for over i think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as i live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250,000. and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes say i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i've seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on, on on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying 
uh, I think some of the in the, the, the IDP camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it David was a man who loved God he sat down one day and said how can I be in a palace and there is no house for God he said Lord I know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however I cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you I will arise and build a house for you God said you have shed too much blood I won't allow you he said no problem I'm still not offended I will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see greed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. No. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. You know who a treasurer is? The money is not your own, but you pass it around. There will always be a portion for you, but you pass it around. A distribution channel. May God make someone hear that your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh, 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 oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Okay, please just turn it so that we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers is finite is finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10. How then? I'm rounding up now.
shall they call upon him whom they have not believed so you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off and how shall they believe of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank god for the means and the capacity please just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now there are people outside to pay and we are stranded do you know what will happen to me as anointed as i've preached as much as you have been blessed because of the financial pressure on me i will be forced to do something else after preaching such a powerful message on souls i will now say sam please come out pastor alpha come out and now try to twist your hand because i have a budget to meet there are many men of god we call money mongers they are not money mongers the pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick so when you are blessed you are here seated there's light the sound system is working well everything after service you are going there's security standing everything is paid for you know the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together is because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirits satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed their marriage will represent a continuity of the kingdom of god but the financial wherewithal is not there they love god but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of god they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this 
it's a cause that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment God did not give you that's an assignment God did not give anyone are you hearing what I'm saying my father is alive my mother is alive by the grace of God I say it in the open I bless them all the time and every time and they are happy I've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life I've had the privilege of of helping in ways little I have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came I've seen people move from scratch to where God will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing I don't care what you are doing I don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting God's time we are going to pray rise up on your feet victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh your life is changing oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs Sing it from your heart. Oh, 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 oh. voice in one minute and say Lord for as long as there is breath in my nostrils your kingdom must advance lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray for as long as there is breath in my nostrils I'm a kingdom advancer I'm a kingdom advancer I pledge allegiance I rededicate my life I rededicate my days I rededicate my influence for the advancement of your kingdom. Victory belongs to Jesus. Are you praying? I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering for your kingdom, for your glory. Revelations 11 verse 15. We are praying very quickly. We are rounding up now. Please, I want you to participate in the prayer. Can you help us, media? Is that possible? Quickly, please. Revelations 11, 15. That's the theme of Koinonia. It's part of the core scriptures, the anchor scriptures of this ministry. I want you to read it. One, to read. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, because of us, hold on, because of my giving, because of my going, because of my praying the kingdoms of this world is a prophecy that must happen I become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever because of my seed he shall reign because of my going he shall reign I live listen the 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 what do they call it when you put on your phone just that thing that comes when you see mine it says a kingdom ambassador promoting God's agenda that is all I live for now if I am not doing that now there is no reason to live believe me the reason why I breathe now is to see the nations call him king of kings and I will do all it takes with the breath I have in life and in death to see that his glory is revealed I want you to pray and say father grace for warfare 
an intercession for souls grace for warfare an intercession for territories are you praying lift your voice and pray point number two father the courage and the zeal to talk to people about Jesus to invite them to the house of the Lord to follow up their establishment I receive it lift your voice and pray the harvest is wide the harvest is wide in Zaria the harvest is wide in your campuses the harvest is wide on the streets the harvest is wide among the old, among the young, among the children. The harvest is wide, but the laborers, intentional laborers are few. Lord, I will not be silent. Lord, I will not be silent. I make my roommates the next project. I make my roommates the next project. I make my colleague in office the next project. I make my father, my mother, the next project of salvation. I will talk to them about Jesus. They will not die and go to hell. You are seated on the throne. Nimarama. Himarama Himarama You are seated on the throne So when you see somebody well behaved No, he's not well behaved His spirit Has submitted to the Holy Spirit And the body Is finding expression Listen you can never call an unbeliever well behaved you are joking no the spirit to trouble him is just on retreat let it come and you will watch that body helplessly under the influence are you getting what i'm saying now watch this the same way a spirit can make a body fail that's how the spirit can make any other physical thing fail a spirit can come upon a building project and make it fail are you together? There's a spirit can come upon a man's CV and that CV becomes the body that that spirit is wearing and that CV starts executing what the spirit looks like and anywhere you take that CV to it cannot give you a job it's not because the CV is not good there is an influence that is producing that failure a spirit can come upon the marital destiny of a lady she may be born again tongue-talking but the spirit can also influence dimensions of our lives so that you will see a lady who loves God very beautiful lady loves God but the moment a man looks at her and loves her that spirit creates an impression a bad impression listen there are spirits upon ministries Many of them may never listen and humble themselves to learn and grow. There are spirits that come upon ministries. Whoever hears about that ministry will misunderstand it. Have you seen ministries like that? Consistently being misunderstood is a spirit. Bishop Oyedeko shared with us how that this thing, I mean, this was a great man of God. The church in Kaduna was not growing. People would come, the next thing they would run away. They were carrying all kinds of stories. And then they were fasting with the brethren and the Lord told him, come out. And he came out and he looked and he saw a dark cloud over the church. 
a real church a true church the church of the lord jesus christ with people who are born again and filled with the holy spirit are we following now and he said this is the dark cloud that is stopping people from coming to your church it's making people to misunderstand what you are doing and he commanded that dark cloud and it rolled away and bam living faith opened till tomorrow we are here tonight to challenge every force are you hearing what i'm saying there are four things that jesus did in his ministry and any man who does not do these four things is not doing ministry like jesus number one jesus preached the gospel to preach means to declare to preach means to proclaim to preach means to announce are we together number two jesus taught don't say i'm not a teacher any man who can understand can teach because teaching is the lead most test to show that you have understood a thing anything you have understood you can teach it if you cannot teach it you have not gotten it so jesus taught number three jesus healed the sick don't forget this don't say i'm not called into the healing ministry jesus healed the sick number four jesus delivered the oppressed he casted out devils please let's be very careful so that in a bid to demonstrate spiritual maturity we do not come to a point where we get up and start um i now i know that i've been criticized already again and again so i want you to listen to me there are all kinds of teachings flying in the body of christ if you know me very well you know that i hate imbalance but it is very important that the scope the entire scope of the message jesus gave the church be preached jesus casted out devils and in mark chapter 16 verse 15 he said this he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils I'm not talking of deliverance that people do all kinds of madness and all of that but for you to ignore the fact that wrong spirits that influence people's lives need to be challenged is an error are you getting me now it's what the bible calls old wives fables teachings that come and look as a consolation in the church but keep them down and keep them poor These spirits influence our lives and produce the outcomes that we see in our lives. When you see an ordinary man anointed, no, it's not just the body that is anointed. The body is only a channel. Are you getting me? For the anointing to find expression. The anointing is within. The anointing is spiritual. You came tonight with prayer requests you came tonight with challenges i want you to know there is a spirit behind that challenge every challenge in any man's life is a sign that there are demon spirits standing that's not a sign that you don't have faith it's a sign that you are in the world the bible says the whole world lies in wickedness hallelujah do you believe what i'm teaching you true freedom then does not just become jumping around and shouting i am free when we can obviously see that there is a, a spirit influencing you how many angry pastors do you know they love god they jump around but you do something they can wind their hand and slap you because you see you can claim you are a man of god you can claim you are whatever but it does not stop those spirits from influencing you listen the influence of spirits over a man's life is a contention it takes light and revelation and the anointing for you to stand in a position where the holy spirit is the only spirit that is authorized to find expression in your human spirit and ultimately through your body but there are many people under the influence of many spirits 
and they will not agree their bodies are helplessly executing masturbation yet they love god their bodies are helplessly executing pornography their bodies are helplessly executing all kinds of things then we try to create messages to say it doesn't matter oh it matters don't let anyone fool you it does it does matter then you lie down in the night to sleep and here comes a gentleman or a gentle lady sleeps with you some of you stand up with bedwetting you stand up with every experience and you just pretend that nothing happened i i pretend i didn't see anything why are you deceiving ah nothing happened i'm okay and you get up and everybody who would have helped you in the day no longer is able to help you and you come back and say no 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 i, I think there's something i'm not claiming look calm down and let the power of god set you free or tell lies and join the crowd of liars with all kinds of struggles in the secret place who will not open up their hearts for true liberty the bible says now the lord is that spirit he said and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i was preaching i was in ministry yet demons were oppressing me shamelessly my own was so bad i would see them physically lie down to sleep and here they come marching gallantly into my room and oppress me they could oppress me so much i can hear people talking in the physical right a lady gets up and has an issue of blood one month two months three months losing blood losing your life no forget about the physical losing of the blood there is a spirit that losing of the blood is is a type of the manifestation of a spirit somewhere you get up a very healthy lady and all of a sudden you find out that there's lump in your breast and you just laugh and say it happens um when you eat in in restaurants too much when you eat fried foods lump will come out look at look at the explanation that you are convinced and, and the spirits are saying i like this generation i like the way science is hiding us from them a man goes to bed healthy and wakes up in the morning and one leg cannot lift again i think the protocol department were there when one small boy did something during counseling i think the last time we had counseling one woman that we prayed for during one of the miracle services so they came for counseling when they came for counseling i looked at the boy the mother was so slim and they were saying that the boy was in occult and all of that and i looked at the boy and i said are you in occult the boy said yes i said who tied your mother he said me i said why now he said they asked him to do it i said go on loser who was there you were there lawrence i mean this guy so wonders that will not end the boy just went sat down on the ground carried mama's legs and started doing it like this then later he'll say remain small he's about to finish when the boy finished he got up now you would have you would have seen that and said this small boy but this boy is only a slave to a spirit when a child of five years old will not let the mother rest that coconut head is not the physical head there is a there is a spirit that makes that head strong and stubborn are we together now slapping the child in anger is only wasting your time there is a spirit that can influence your life and bad luck follows you you become a magnet you never magnetize anything good if car is to jam people you are the one it will jam if police is to gather some people as suspects it's just when they are catching people you just come in they say follow them you say no 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 i attend koinonia they say go ahead, explain in the police station now you may laugh about it you may laugh about it every bad thing happens to you everyone laughs in the class but the lecturer will ask you to stand up and say why did you laugh as if you are the only person and you were at the back listen that lecturer himself may be a victim to a spirit is joining your heads together and so by coming to his office you now say you I, I don't you smile what is your name now you are entered another level of, of trouble humans 
victims to spirits that's what is happening in the earth i feel very sad when i see people they get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know listen they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution there is a spirit that is driving you when you see favor coming to a man no there is a spirit that makes it happen there is an operation there is an anointing are you getting me now you can just be sitting down and then god will speak to you carry ten thousand naira and give a marker why didn't god say somebody should give to you there is something it's not just that okay god has pity no 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 if you understand this you will know how easy it is to walk in victory you don't focus on this physical body you focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it because that's what determines the possibilities there are people who almost never pay for anything when you are going to buy something that's where somebody comes and says do you know i was thinking about you this morning and you tell the person i'm not surprised because the activity of the holy spirit manifesting as different things favor the blessing whatever it is orchestrate events together for you are you getting what i'm saying now as a pastor the day the anointing is strong upon your life that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program you stand and preach your life out and everybody say kai we have seen what what god is doing through you and uh, as a family we really appreciate uh, by god's grace next convention will not forget you i assure you and you stand up and go but someone else the day he's coming somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and he'll say let me attend this program and he comes and says god has been asking me to sow into a man this preacher is that man you think it just happens The only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what? Everything of worth is planted. Are you getting what I'm saying? Favor does not just come. A ministry does not just grow. Anointing doesn't just come. Revelation doesn't just come. Honor doesn't just come. A man doesn't just become sick. A man doesn't just become healed. Was it not in your Bible? Listen that the trouble around daniel's life was the spirit of the medis and the persians is that not true it was happening physically through human beings but it was a spirit because it was under the influence of the 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 medis and the persians it was a spirit that made men to serve idols and now a man came called daniel and he was praying and his prayer was judging those spirits and so they could not influence the king and he made the king like daniel are you getting me now and the king's liking daniel made him to subscribe to the god of daniel and those spirits said no we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king and daniel so one day you get up and somebody comes you you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jam your head you and your destiny helper and left it's not just that a neighbor came a spirit visited your compound using human vessels jammed the head of two people and left all of you together are you getting what i'm saying now a husband and a wife lovely people romeo and juliet the marriage is going well all of a sudden a spirit lands in that house and then something happens a woman who has been minding her business all of a sudden she looks at a text and doesn't see it properly and she thinks that she saw i love you to another woman she carries it and lands the phone on the man's head only to find out that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the holy spirit i mean the, the demon spirit will come again into the house something will happen that demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job 
are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies there is a clash of spirits they are claiming your body listen do you know that when moses died watch this when michael came to carry the body of moses he found satan too satan wanted to use the body of moses enter it and resurrect as moses are you getting the point now resurrect as moses and start bringing error to people and he needed the body desperately and michael said no 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 i'm not going to drag with you the lord rebuke you how many people saw your mother in a dream a spirit carried the face of your innocent mother landed it in the dream of her enemy and she got up and said i knew it i knew it joshua selman's mother is a witch this one i saw it the woman came with a knife how many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards and and this is what many prophets see and because they do not have discernment are you getting the point now they now say i saw who some this and that and that and that is it not in your bible when a a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of samuel to prophesy i refuse any other spirit from influencing my life I, I, I don't have time for that i cannot be a victim for the the failure that is orchestrated look at job one more scripture to prove this to you job a man who loved god and eschewed evil but the bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens job was not there oh a man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you your children are on the way thunder strikes them you just finish furnishing your house thunder strikes it your cattle die mysteriously notice all the deaths that happened there was one one people left to come and testify is that a testimony job i'm the only one who is alive this is what happened and then the meeting was held again and he said let's touch his body ah. so a meeting can happen watch this let's destroy this family and they conclude it you snore your way through the morning wake up and that's the last time you know peace in a long time you are a victim your body is only a victim tonight this is the this is the theme of this miracle service let me tell you when these spirits clear out of the way you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you all of a sudden you who nobody would call you you will receive a call the last time you spoke with that person was five years he did just call you the holy ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call every time they want to think about you a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering and when you come to us men of god we say it's okay don't worry things will change one day go better that, that, that. No, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist you are mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants 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 you reign you ancient zion's king 
Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation. Listen, a man can wear the inner wears of a woman watch this and be moving on the street and that man returns back and blessings keep following him a very stupid man but good things are happening in his life let me tell you why it's because of the covenant of the fathers there were people who signed an agreement and said lord we give this nation to you anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing and so a woman a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive in nigeria you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he would die was it the knife that killed him at the doctor so daft let me tell you what our forefathers left with us ready this is what they left they went to mountains valleys regions listen and all kinds of ancestry we can fake it and pretend listen i'm a new creation person i've read the pauline epistles are you getting what i'm saying i understand the grace of god and the new creation realities very well but i know god and i understand his ways are you following me now please come two people very quickly so that i need to no no sit down pastor for me I promise you can come come stand here stand here watch this in my example this guy is a thief this guy is a wrong occupant watch this if this is my handkerchief and ken comes to quickly steal it the moment he hears this my footsteps what will he do he will run away because he's a what thief but if somebody comes and meets promise and say promise give me 10 naira i will give you this handkerchief and promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief is there a contract there is there a covenant there if he sees me coming will he refuse because you see the realm of the spirit is a legal realm are you getting what i'm saying now so our forefathers went to idols and they said protect our wives make the plants bring crops for us in response we will hold festivals every time in response we will donate children to you in response they, it was not their fault they did it because christianity had not come to nigeria now watch this when samuel ajayi crowder and many other christians came they brought the gospel of salvation not the mysteries of the kingdom are you getting me they brought the gospel and we salute them but that was not enough the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught so even they themselves died i traveled to we were in gombe one time gombe state and we we're going to Yerima's village to go and greet his family. And on our way there, there was a rock like a cap. And they were telling us the story there. That the people used to live there. That that rock used to open physically. There was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open. And people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war. And this is what they said. The last person to enter... You are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just 
found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenants even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course what have i not said verse 6 here god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the Bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey God nothing happens no it's not about God doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the Old Testament those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight, I want you to look at your life very carefully. Especially for those of us who have come. Have you not seen 
traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and received a slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end i sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the holy spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives i saw poverty in my family as if we offended god coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed that's why i told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance listen as we begin to pray many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone really when you understand this you will know what a miracle is a miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs this is what jesus did to the woman who was bound he looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years and he said woman thou art loose loose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirits heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah mighty on your throne mighty on your throne i'll never forget one time i was praying praying seriously i was in the spirit and i had a vision i saw that there is a tree that is close to where i stay and i didn't see that tree again i just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine 
this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to Mount Zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that Jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescue the earth lives in me lives in me
same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Sing it two more times with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Rescue the earth lives in me, lives in me. Jump up on your feet as we sing it one more time. Same that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, the conquer the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Listen. Deliverance, therefore, is a separation. Is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences the spirits that attempt to influence your life the legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and God is ready for us tonight I tell you God is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Just the voices, sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar, the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft. Any generational cost. One more time, sing it. That conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Same power. 
lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say, your love. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures, challenge the spirit behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold I give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Break it, 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 break it,
Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Embriakata. La tecatata, manto porotoskia, seketetete, emprokotoska yadaba. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one. Is the one that will bring your miracle listen as this prayer goes on miracles will start immediately many of you will start getting reports from your body many of you will be open to visions right now lift your hands hallelujah my goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Mata Labata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One. Two, three. Second, second, I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire. 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 Bring deliverance tonight. Shaka baba baba baba, embrotos tete, shake tete tete tete, tete 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout physically. It will come out. Lift your voice. Bata bata. Shaka ta ta ta. Mare tende tepa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we are victim. One, two, three. Shaka ta 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 ta. Shaka ta 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 ta. Shaka ta ta ta. E protos mokotos lekotos. He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. 
you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives My goodness, fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The Lord is giving me a word right now. There are ladies here. There is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you, to sleep with you right now. Lord, where are they? Let that fire, let that fire bring deliverance right now, right now, right now, right now. Every spirit husband, every manifestation, every spirit wife, every devil that has leads to you, it leaves you now, now, right now. He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something After this miracle service You will see advancement In your life in a way that will surprise you That's when you will know That Satan is not as powerful as he looks Hallelujah Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously 
as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? this you are asabe. please stand here miracles everywhere come tell us very quickly come come please help us give a run let's let's coordinate them okay come sir let's just listen to this give them the mic Lawrence just testify tell us look at the crowd straight to the point what happened to you what is the miracle praise the Lord I am the girl whom the man of God prophesied I have an irritation in my nose since 2012 2012 yes. and now what happened every day once I put my hand I I always notice blood coming out but now I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. 
all kinds of miracles are happening in this place please the next people let's have them come very quickly just turn and let's testify don't look at me look at the crowd praise the lord hallelujah i i have this bonus while we are session. talking there is a lady who will come strongly me. under the anointing outside please pick that lady and bring her hallelujah. as we are talking the power of god is in fact two ladies two ladies outside mightily by the anointing please pick them and bring them yes ma'am hallelujah on my left thigh i have this burning sensation i don't even know what cause but i know that once it starts it burns me as if i'm sitting on fire okay but now it's gone and since last hearing this voice saying i will die even when i was coming last week i had this fear that i was going to but right now it's gone. completely gone give jesus praise god bless you yes please check yourself if you see a miracle you can come out we are going to pray for the sick but we want to take testimonies We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Praise give her a Lord. chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So I peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I, one more outside. Go and carry her. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But... Um, when I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said that we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left, left side. Please check it, check it. 
when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my name is like i'm pregnant it's to come like pain as in i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relieved and my stomach in fact down. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost it's even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff and um, it's you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now god is giving you a miracle god is giving you a miracle god bless you bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the so i now shout the stomach used to pay me even before i come to zaria but i can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. give jesus praise it never returns again yes please praise the lord um recently i started having this eye pain when i'm walking doing other things one of the eye get blank and i don't see again but now and after the prayers i feel one sharp pain and i used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time but it just left me immediately if jesus prays it never returns to you again in the name of jesus glory be to jesus christ this abdominal pain starts two days ago so i came here and when i was praying i just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god is to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, comes sir. to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika consigning pain. In pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see the anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that god is working on yes. their system and, and now what has happened to you the pain is gone. the pain is completely even gone the medical, Jesus praise. even the medical report is in my room the medical report is in your room yeah. you go and check yourself and you find out all of you that were under the anointing where you get up don't just go back to your seat check you will find out that all kinds of things have happened you are not just falling for nothing praise the lord praise the, praise the lord i'm trusting god for a new set of dentition my teeth are just go ahead the power of god is on her oh father complete what you have started in the name of jesus i stretch my hands towards you in the name of jesus because your faith can receive it let it have it in the name of jesus christ 
Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there is this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like the swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very, a swelling there yeah, yeah and now have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there okay completely gone come on give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i don't thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the spirit of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, praise please. the Lord. I want to I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child when, when I was when I was young. I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know, sometimes 2nd of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her, fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I I've saw been that shaking, a, a, a I've finger. Been shaking it. I've been shaking it and no I'm pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama is on as I make her door, please. You people should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming on, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like it it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother he's, where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them laughing at him and they are saying it, it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man he should be faithful to that man amen. that man will bless him amen. father let there be breakthrough in this family in the name of jesus asabe gabriel oh your name is gabriel your name too is gabriel sir who is titi lion titi lion i'm hearing a name titi lion Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long you are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is no word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name praise the lord
Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding. You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing. No, sir. You are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her? Your sister is Titilayo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Cardinal. What's she doing? She's schooling at Cardinal. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her, is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes, this thing. Is yes, that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love our God is an awesome God. Our God. Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. From heaven above with wings. The power and love. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do might, you do glory, you do glory, you are a great God, awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child, 
that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen. Because it's been long I saw him. Breathe well, and at the same time, he's having problem with mama. None of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, that he's grateful for. It's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus. And I cancel the plague of witchcraft. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba. They will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe, listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names, we lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now, let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. 
right now in the name of Jesus from village. I go election. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In Jahem. You go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is look at look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are... Or you are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it, but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, Blessed is the man 
who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law that he meditate day and night i curse that madness in the name of jesus christ and i pray for supernatural healing look at me look at me lift your hands forget about the wound lift it up careful you broke the hand oh it can't lift oh i see no 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 if you can't lift don't, don't harm yourself i thought you broke your bone that's why i was asking you to lift it father let there be a miracle right now in the name of the lord jesus christ god bless you and anybody who smokes it go in this place if you know you smoke it go or codeine altar once i make the altar call just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
love upon your feet. to be praying on the request right now at the same time an altar call is called an altar call will be going those who need jesus christ you are here right now inside and outside there are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies the ones that i spoke to now is the time you can come before the presence of god don't feel bad we're a family and any other person there are those who are saying lord i'm tired of the way my life is I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. And um, will fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. prophesy over it Lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence makata lato every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah, responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it, jesus, we challenge it. lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony 
in the name of Jesus Christ and you will stand to testify before the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion i arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of jesus christ for those who are students i pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the lord jesus christ may you record five points in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing i declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of jesus christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the holy spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service i call them forth into your life mysterious help us mysterious help us in the name of jesus christ i pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of god i kill it right now in the name of jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as i pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor
come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 